there. I am Sarah Colas. Welcome to the Dressing Up podcast, where we talk about all things bridal, dresses, and general dressing up topics. I love to encourage women to dress up while expressing their personal style with confidence on how to do so. Visit sarahcolas.com to book a bridal alterations fitting or even inquire about designing the custom couture bridal gown of your dreams. I'm so excited to talk to you about this next topic. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Dressing Up podcast. I got dressed up recently for a very important party. We did my studio grand opening party just a couple days ago, and I'm going to record here a little recap about the party. But first, I want to tell a little bit about the studio itself because everybody asks (laughs) about it. All my brides coming in, the bride's moms, the friends, everybody is always asking the question. It's just, it's not really an exact question, but just like confusion, please explain. I'm so curious. Walking in for fittings, they'll ask, you know, so, so, so do you live here? So is this your, is this like, what is this place? So I'm going to explain it here. Hopefully it can answer a lot of questions. So I have this really nice studio space. This space used to be a full-blown garage. Okay. Okay. So it's on the property of my house. I joke that it's like the ultimate she shed, if you will. I live next door. So a totally separate building. So we converted the garage. There is still one actually behind right the store right behind me. There is a one car garage space still. No, it doesn't fit a full. I mean, I took over quite a bit of the garage so you could fit a small car in there, but it's good for just a little bit of garage space that I actually I'm using right now for steaming dresses in the super busy season, but this is a converted garage, but a very nice converted garage. And most people are shocked by that because we did do it very, very nicely. So it's got a very cottagey type of feel. It's a really nice space walking up, even just parking your car and walking up to the space is really cute outside. When my husband and I, I've been working out of my house for 12 years. So when my husband and I were thinking about moving a lot of you may have heard this but the the sign that really got me moving and thinking about moving is when i was working in our last house working a lot getting busy and one night billy my husband sent to me he's like sarah do we need to have dress forms in our living room and i'm like I have nowhere else to put them. I am running out of space. It's just the two of us living there with our two cats, but we I was just stretched. I was taking up so much of the house. He didn't like that. I didn't necessarily like that aspect of it either. I joke that I lived where I worked. <laughs> so it was kind of the kick I needed to start looking online at potentially moving. Then from there, it gets to be a really long story. <laughs> I'm going to shorten it here. But we found this house that has a detached garage and I really, really wanted it. There were some roadblocks to it. So I was looking at other houses with detached garages, a lot of them being in South Lyon and Milford, Michigan, really cute little towns, but it would have been deep off the highway and on dirt roads. And as you can imagine with what I do for work, I would not allow my brides to uh, drive off of a dirt road have a really dirty car and then pull their white wedding dress out of their car, all the dirt that would be coming into the space. No, it was just absolutely no, it cannot be on a dirt road. And then I was entertaining commercial spaces, which you would think would make sense. But when I work with brides, I work with them one-on-one, just one after another. So I, I, it's not a shop. I'm not a retail space. It's a very different type of business than a normal shop. And with the commercial spaces I was looking at, they were like four times the price of what even this space was. So per square foot, this was like the actual, actually, honestly, the cheapest way to go for what I, for the amount of square footage I was looking for and way cuter, more adorable. And plus I enjoy working close to home anyway. So it's been working out really nicely. So if you're a bride coming for a fitting soon, you will see that you'll, you can park at the top of the driveway here, and then you'll obviously see my little studio front door and it's really cute. So come on in. So as a sort of celebration, I threw a grand opening party, which was so much fun. 
the timing on that being in August, the construction actually completed, I want to say like, uh, like actually completed like June, but completed enough is what I want to say by May 11th, which was my sister's wedding day. So when we bought this space and started working on the construction, my sister was like, oh my gosh, this timing is perfect because now I can get ready in your studio on my wedding day. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. We're going to have to rush this a little bit. So we did Jamil with MMC remodeling was just really great at really sticking to that timeline because we had a hard deadline to get ready in the studio space, for my sister's wedding, which was absolutely fabulous. It honestly was like the best space for something like that. We also threw her photo shoot in here a week before the wedding and everything too. So that was fabulous. But it was kind of, it was, it was obviously nice to have a shorter uh, timeline because it got completed sooner. But also on top of that, May is when the weather starts getting really nice. And the house that I was working in, in the interim, doesn't have AC. So I would be horrified to make my brides try on their wedding dresses and the heat and humidity of the house. So that timing honestly worked out perfect. So it was probably maybe a week or a week or two right after my sister's wedding that I actually started taking bridal appointments in the studio itself. It was very extremely raw at that point. Like, I don't even know if I, I had furniture at all in here. Um, but I just needed to get them moving in here. One, to like get me moving and organized, but also to to get into the AC. So the converted garage studio space has AC where the house does not, which, you know, my husband jokes about. He's like, why is this studio? Why is my garage nicer than my house? <laughs> so it is, it is very nice. <laughs> so then after my sister's wedding, I was completely exhausted because I had just finished renovating the space planning her bachelorette party. We did the photo shoot. We did the wedding. I made the dress. I made all these other dresses. It was a lot. And I just mentally needed a break. So I just very, 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 very slowly was decorating a little bit, doing a little bit here and there. And I just needed to deflate a little bit before I started planning my grand opening party. I just had to, because if I had my grand opening party, say in like early July, I would have had to start planning the party before my sister's wedding. And there was just absolutely no way I could do that. So after her wedding, I decompressed a little bit. And then the first thing I said I needed to do for this grand opening party is just look at the calendar and just set a date. So I did that. So I chose August 14th and I thought that was good because I can very slowly start planning the party. I mean, it's not this huge to do, but there's a couple of things that need to be done and, and ordered online and all those things. So, so I set the date and started telling my really close family and friends, and then worked on the formal invitation, sent that out to my whole email list, which by the way, if you want to hear about future events and parties, which I'm not going to do often, I'll tell you that, but getting on my email list is definitely the sure way to know about it. I didn't want to blast the address just to my whole entire social media following. So if you didn't fully hear about it through social media, that's why. But my email list, I have a little more trust in because there are people like actually know or very loyal followers. I'd love for you to, to look at all that kind of stuff too. And then for actually planning the party, we had the flower alley with flowers, gorgeous, big hydrangea bouquet on the coffee table. There are all these little other arrangements around. What I love about Kayla there is she knows, I just don't want to make any decisions. <laughs> so she actually knew my branding colors were blue, but I didn't even give her that originally. And I just said, I just need flowers for my party. Here's some vases that I have. And she's like, your colors are light blue, right? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, okay, that's what we're going to do. And I'm like, okay, sounds good. Uh, so that was great. And she even delivered. So thank you so much, Kayla and the whole Flower Alley team. You're amazing. So I invited a bunch of people to the party and there is one woman that could not attend, Vanessa. She owns Sweet Details Grand Rapids. She sent me the most adorable cookies for the party. What I love about that is I know of a lot of cookie, fancy cookie companies, but she mailed the cookies, which was so great. So if you have a party or bachelorette party or wedding coming up, she can ship to you. So that's awesome. Adorable cookies. Um, I wouldn't know how they taste. I'm sure they were delicious, but they were just gone in a heartbeat. So that was great. They were very, very popular. And then we, I hired Catherine's Catering. 
for some food. Oh, it was adorable. Actually, right where I'm recording this podcast right now, there was a table and they came and set up this gorgeous display. What I loved about them is that again, I don't want to make any further decisions. I kind of told them a little bit about my party, what I'm looking for, nothing too messy, little grab and go, little bites um, that everybody would love. And we didn't even talk about foods specifically, but they gave me a quote back with all these options of what they thought would be nice. And I'm not a foodie. That's not my area of expertise. And I just said, go for it. Let's do it. And then they came and set it up and it looked so cute. They had all these little like layers and tiers and they even put string lights through it. Oh my God, it was adorable. And the food was so good. Oh my goodness. I got so many compliments. So that was great. And then, and then that was kind of it as far as vendors go. I just needed to get those things booked sooner than later, sent out the invitations, and then just getting the studio ready was the big thing. My dad helped so much with Paul and Billy and his family, everyone just pitching and helping with the landscaping, especially. That was great, which I wasn't even going to be that picky on, but they were very picky about it. So our house has never looked better. (laughs) It looks really nice outside. And I know the leaves are going to be falling soon. So we won't enjoy it for much longer. Um, But it looked so great for the party. Everyone was helping so much. I had uh, Melissa, my sister come over and she helped organize a lot of my fabric upstairs. So if you're at that party and you saw all those pretty stacks of fabric and the storage upstairs, um, that was her. And then my mother-in-law, Beth, finishing it off the next day. That was great. Melissa helped stuff a lot of the goodie bags. The goodie bags had just like little business cards, a thank you note, little articles and a cookie and a pen. So that was kind of fun, a fun grab and go. And then there was another item as you're leaving too that I'm going to explain in a second. Billy, of course, my husband helped so, so much. I can never thank him enough. Him and my dad were just absolute rock stars with putting the studio together in general, but also putting the party together. So that was great. They especially helped right at the end when I couldn't make decisions on where hooks were going to be hung, where picture frames were going to be hung. And they did them late at night because I couldn't decide any sooner. So they were very flexible and I'm very thankful for that. I also had my, my brother-in-law, my new brother-in-law Cam helped for a couple days outdoor outside doing landscaping. I'm not even completely sure what he was doing, but thank you so much, Cam. Beth and Bill and Robbie for helping multiple times over the summer with landscaping (laughs) and various projects. I could go on and on about people I could thank, but especially those people and my sister, Angela, and my future brother-in-law, Kevin, they're going to be getting married. Actually, I should share a little bit about that. But they came to the party very, very early that day. They were actually vacationing in South Haven, but came back just for the party. And they helped greatly. Right when they showed up, I felt like so such a sense of relief because they just know what to do to help. But Kevin was a great bartender up at the front. So if you got a drink from him right after getting out of your car for the party, that was him. I heard he did fabulous. And then Angela, I guess, was his assistant. (laughs) And then we had Robbie bartending in the back. So if you left uh, the studio and went outside, he was helping you with drinks over there. And they were troopers. They did the entire party (laughs) was so great. I told them they could like take breaks and shifts and things, but they were, they were going. It was great. Angela's always very good at helping just finding something to do. I don't need to tell her what needs to be done. She just sees it and does it. Oh my gosh. She's so helpful in that way. But anyway, they're getting married on June 14th at Meadowbrook Country Club. So I'm super excited for them. They just booked their venue maybe a week ago. And so they're going to start looking at the other details. But I've been really busy. So I really want to sit down and do a coffee date with her and talk about the wedding because we just haven't quite done that yet. So I'm excited about that. So then for the studio decor, again, it's been moving very slowly, but I had a huge kick With the grand opening party coming up, I had a lot of motivation to get things done. So we have, if you've come for fittings or just seen photos online, we have my estate sale couch here. That is not going to stay there. That is supposed to go upstairs. I already ordered a light blue velvet couch for there. But otherwise, I have a lot of estate sale furniture. One, because it's cheap. And and if I am going to change my mind and get rid of it later, I don't have to feel so guilty. And then some of the furniture I'm borrowing from my parents because... I felt like there was a lot of furniture I wanted to buy online that was more expensive, nicer, 
furniture, which I might do eventually. Black Friday is coming up, so I'm definitely going to wait until then anyway. But secondly, I, I don't love the concept of not being able to see the furniture before I buy it and to spend a lot of money on it and for it to take eight to 10 weeks to come in. It wouldn't have been in in time for my party. So I just said, we're just going to table that and revisit that later. So I just kind of made it work for now. But I honestly think it looks really cute as is. So I might leave it this way for a while just to start. I already get a lot of compliments on the furniture as it is. And then what I did for the party too is you can see behind me, I have these dress form set up. I displayed a bunch of my dresses around the studio, even just hanging on the hooks on the wall. I put dresses. A lot of what you saw if you were at the party is honestly a lot of my own dresses that I've made for myself. In addition to a lot of the styled shoot wedding dresses that I've made or New York fashion week dresses, because of course, when I'm making dresses for my clients, they take them home. So I don't have them anymore, but trust me, their photos are blasted everywhere. And I love them so much. Melissa's wedding dress, I, I might have just put on a hanger, but it's getting cleaned right now. As you probably saw in a previous podcast episode, I sent it out to get cleaned and I don't have it back yet, but I'm excited for that. What else did I do? Okay. I have, I had a guest book that was really great. Everyone signed that, which was so sweet, some sweet notes, but then also just like remembering who was here or there were a couple of people that I didn't get a chance to say hi to, but I know they were here because they signed the guest book. Upstairs, I put, I put out a bunch of my sketches that I've made over the years. I put out my patterns on display. I have like these patterns that I put in very nice organized envelopes. So if I'm ever remaking that dress again, I have notes from how I made it the previous time and how it fit, how I needed to tweak it so I can make it better the next time. Had that all out. I had some, I had some old photo books of things I made. I had my really old book of things that I made when I was a little kid. It is I thought it was so cool at the time. It is. It looks terrible, but it's the history <laughs> of how I learned how to sew. My goodness, I was so proud of myself from a technology standpoint. I had the two TVs upstairs in my workspace going with a video of like all of my portfolio work rolling throughout the party. So it was just on repeat, like different videos that I've made in my business, photos of dresses that I've made and of my clients' dresses and it was really cute, but I made that video all by myself. Apparently PowerPoint now has a video feature. So I was able to do it that way. And then I uploaded it literally the morning of the party. And then Billy got it going on repeat on the TVs. So <laughs> I was pretty proud of myself. And my dad was so impressed. He was like, oh my goodness. He loved it. Other studio decor. Oh my goodness. I don't know. Oh, if you come into my studio and you walk in the door and look directly to your left, there's this a pencil drawing of a, a staircase. It looks really pretty. It's a picture on the wall. My mom drew that when she was in high school. I was always in awe of that hanging at their house in the little office space. And I'm so proud that it's now in my studio. It looks really cute there, actually. What other fun things? I have right behind me here, I now have this shelving unit. I don't think this is a forever furniture piece, but it's working great for right now. But I'm putting some retail items on there. So this is brand new. So I have my aisle style wedding planning guide on there. Honestly, I highly, I mean, I'm extremely biased guys, but I highly recommend that. I've given that to several people that have purchased it, but also like whenever my friends get engaged, I give them that. So that I've heard that it's very helpful. I try to think kind of outside the box with the wedding planning stuff because there's so much you can find on Pinterest and so many wedding planning guides about, you know, how many seats can fit at a such and such size table and, and this and that. But this one is more about actually, I, I like to think of it as sitting down with your fiance on a date night and going through these pages together. It's kind of fun. It's more interactive to bring him in. And it's not all about just the logistics of wedding planning, but more different ways of, of thinking about things, things that can be easily forgotten, things that you need to discuss that, that you don't want to wait until the week before to, to figure it out, like wedding hashtags. And I don't know, just various tips about wedding planning, tips for the week before your wedding. So even if you're well into wedding planning, it's still a really great document, like a month before your wedding, even, even, even slightly like a week before your wedding, but especially a month before your wedding or sooner is great. If you have a friend getting engaged, you can buy it right from my website and I can ship it right to them. I'm also selling the bedsheet dress bows, the hair bows. Those have been popular. And then I'm looking forward to other things as well. I kind of want to just dabble into 
kind of enhancing the bridal alterations experience with just a few fun items on the shelf there. Oh, I also make that you, you can kind of see them hanging, but when you come for your fitting, you'll definitely see them. These little hearts out of the extra fabric from your wedding dress. That's an option of something I can make with the scraps from your fabric. They're really cute. You can use them as a Christmas ornament is what, how I use them, but you can also just leave them hanging somewhere like on a doorknob or something just as decoration. Okay. Back to the party. So, so the actual day of the party, I woke up at like 6 AM. I finished up everything I wanted to do in the studio, got everything cleaned up as much as possible and then got dressed. And then the start of the party was a little bit of a slower start. We did three to 9 PM. So at 3 p.m., I knew it was going to start slowly, which it did. It was great. I got to talk to very, very much so to the people that came early. And then it's really started to pick up by like five o'clock. It was crazy busy. Bartender Kevin and Angela counted up. There was at least 165 people that came. So that was really fun. And it was a combination of basically everybody I know. <laughs> so it was a lot of friends. Some friends I have not seen in five plus years came. It was so nice of them. A lot of family, extended family. We had a lot of wedding industry people. So that was really great to get them in here to see the studio space all nice and clean, see the upstairs. It was just an awesome group of people. So I'm so thankful. If you came to the party, you heard me say this already, but thank you so much for coming. It felt so good to feel like this space was celebrated and to be able to spend that little bit of time with you and just like enjoy a really nice, beautiful summer day. So the way the party worked is you'd arrive. We had valet. We kind of have to do valet with that number of people. There was, it was just, there was just no way that parking situation wouldn't have turned into chaos. So you arrived right at the front, got your drink. We just had like a little cocktail table outside you can mingle at and then going through the studio, the whole first floor, the whole second floor. I did have a, a guided map for people to read as they were going around as if I were giving the tour for you. And then you'd go upstairs, tour the whole upstairs, come back down and then go out the back door there was another bartender, Robbie, there. And then continue on, we had a bunch of tables and seating out in the backyard. And then right there in our barn, we had some more food. We had a live band, which was really fun. We had a caricature artist, super fun. And then at each of the tables, I had like different photo books of dresses I've made. Um, the weather could not have held out any better. It was awesome. Had it rained, we would have had to have everything inside. But because the weather was so nice, we got to utilize so much of our backyard, which was so much fun. And then it was just great to mingle with everybody. So everyone, of course, telling me how beautiful the studio looked and great job. Congratulations. That all felt so good. I realized I did not do this all by myself. So I have so many people to thank to help me get here. But I appreciate all the kind words and I am so thankful for the community that I have to support me, support my business, and just be there for me, just showing up for this party. It just meant so much to each and every one of you. I shared a really special moment with my mom before the party started. I can't even remember what she said, we were, but we were both tearing up in the corner here of the studio. Just, she was just telling me how proud she was of me and all that. So thank you, mom. I love you so much. <laughs> you helped me get here. You and dad did so much. One of the really fun things I had at the party, and this was a surprise, I didn't tell, well, Billy kind of knew about it, but I didn't tell really anyone about it. Abigail and I worked on it together, and I just, because I thought, you know, if I can't get it done in time, if something happens, it's too expensive, this or that, I just want to disappoint anyone. So here it is. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm holding it up, but it is a magazine, okay? This is really cute. It's a magazine all about Melissa's wedding. So we put together all these little stories and all these little photos and things all about Melissa's whole engagement experience. And with this magazine, I just wanted to share more content than I can really get out on social media or my email list or blogs. I mean, this is like everything. This is everything about her story. So if you're coming in soon for a wedding dress fitting, just know that these are on the bottom of the shelf here. If you see this, feel free to take one. All right. So a lot of photos here from Penny Raylene Photography. She's awesome. It's really cute. Yeah, let's see. Let's go through it. So first I start with the editor's note, a little bit about her engagement, the gown, gowns, <laughs> plural, the dresses and gowns, the bachelorette party, just some little random quotes. 
the photo shoot, the bridal shower. The bridal shower photos were Brittany Allen. She was awesome. Just showed up and made it happen. The glam squad, that was fun. Uh, the night before the wedding, getting ready, the wedding day, the reception, honeymoon, featured wedding vendors. Melissa and Cam put a little blurb thanking each of their wedding vendors, the brunch, and then a little bit about the next the next issue. <laughs> Guys, this is just for fun. I'm not trying to be a magazine publisher, all right? I have enough going on, but with Abigail's help, I was able to do this. The next issue, I want to feature the studio grand opening party, just a little bit more about the studio itself. And then also I want to, this first issue was all about Melissa, but I do not intend on highlighting one bride in all of the magazines. So I do plan on featuring real brides. So if you're, again, <laughs> if you're coming to me for alterations or you already have come to me for alterations, honestly, I'm not even joking. If you got your alterations done with me like three plus years ago, I don't care. If you fill out that little questionnaire, um, I believe it's on the bottom of the homepage of the website. If you can't find it, email us. We'll give you the link. But there is a questionnaire for real brides after their wedding. They have their wedding photos. There's a questionnaire to fill out for you to fill out all of this information. And then we can use that information to post about you on our social media and potentially in the next magazine issue. Even if your wedding was far out, we still would love to give you a shout out and put a little picture of you in here. So you can do that. What else? And then I want to share more like wedding tips in this magazine, kind of post-wedding things as well. Anything fashion related, bridal related, anything about the new happenings with my business and so much more. So if you're in the studio, you can grab one of these or honestly, send me a DM. I'll ship you one. I really will. No charge. I'll ship you one. At least no charge for now. So <laughs> get one while you can. I just need your address. Let's talk about my dress for the party. Oh my gosh, I loved it. Okay, I went to a wedding recently, Isabella Falsetti, love you. I wore an old dress that I originally made to my friend Secreti's wedding, love you too, girl. It was a purple dress, looked very similar to what I ended up wearing for the grand opening party. And I just took that pattern and shortened it to ankle length or a little more like midi length and otherwise used the exact same pattern and made it in light blue with no sash, but just a, a different bow on the center back. So I obviously, whenever I make stuff for myself, I just have to make it quickly. I don't have time to spend a ton of time on a dress that is for myself. So I try to just make things quickly, but I really love the elegance of this. Here, I'm going to bring it over one second. Okay, here it is. People say it's very Jackie O. It's got the high neck, little pleats in the front, low back. Look at the cute little bow back there. And then it has pockets, of course. Oh my gosh, pocket. And then, yeah, it's just a midi length dress, 100% silk shantung, the most beautiful light blue color. When I got married five years ago, I worked with this fabric company that has this light blue color that I use for a lot of the bridesmaid dresses. So this is the exact color of my bridesmaid dresses. Side note, that's why I use light blue as my branding color for my business because when I did my wedding, and I had light blue bridesmaid dresses. I thought it'd be really easy to use my wedding photos for branding purposes. And because I had that light blue in there, I said, let's use that. And that would all look cohesive. But I can't let go of the light blue color. I still love it five years later. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it around. I got these cute little shoes from DSW to go with it. I saw these and I'm like, the color is perfect. But look how adorable, right? Sorry, if you're listening to this on the actual podcast, it's got the shoes have this little stiletto. And then this really fun ruffle on the top of the toe, open toe shoes, little heels. So it was great. And then, so Mary Frances Maker is my jewelry friend down South. And she custom made me this pin that I wore for the grand opening party. And we made this print pin in celebration of the studio. So I actually had it done back when the studio construction was done and wore it like the whole first week that I started taking brides in here just as a celebration. But here, let me show you. If, if you're on YouTube, I'm going to show you here. Okay. So it is this gold pin that is of my logo. And it's just this tiny little thing that you can pin to like the collar of your shirt or just on your shirt itself. But in this case, I really wanted to wear it with this dress, but I thought it would have looked weird up top. So I just put it on this little pleat at my waistline, which I thought was the most adorable thing because it's 
a very unusual spot to put a pin or a brooch, but I thought that it was really nice and subtle, but you would still notice it if you're standing close to me. So that was really fun to be able to celebrate that. So thank you, Mary Frances. It was adorable and I loved wearing it. Okay, also so randomly, uh, two days before the grand opening party, I had uh, posted about this bridesmaid dress that I wore to my friend Mary's wedding and it went viral so quick. It was so cool. I think I'm at like 14.1 million views right now, but it just like launched. So if you saw that, you know what I'm talking about, but it's this bridesmaid dress behind me. Okay. So this dress, I'm just showing you just for fun since I'm on the podcast and it's here. So I had this hung up. This dress has pockets <laughs> in here. So as a bridesmaid, this was awesome because you can't always carry a purse around. So I had all this. And then, so there's two pockets up here on the upper flap, one giant pocket here down low, and then two pockets in the back here. As you can imagine, when I'm a bridesmaid in a wedding, or honestly, whenever I even just attend a wedding in my personal life, you know, not for work, I end up being the go-to person for so many things. Sarah, do you have safety pins? Sarah, do you have scissors? Sarah, do you have a Band-Aid? Sarah, do you have your GoPro? Let's take a video of this. I, I'm so... Pro GoPro. I love my GoPro. Very, it, it's more for home videos, not for social media, not for business, but honestly, purely home videos. So for my friends' weddings, I did a lot of GoProing. But I need a place to put them. And most dresses don't have pockets. So your purse is way over there and you're walking down the aisle. And then after the ceremony, you don't have your phone. You don't have this. You don't have that. I was able to keep all of that right on me. It was so nice. I wasn't scrambling, looking around for everything. I had everything right there. And this, oh my gosh, this was just so popular at the wedding. And everyone would always say, Sarah, Sarah, come here, come here, come here. Show my friend, show my friend, do the thing, do the thing. And doing the thing meant showing them all the pockets. So it was, it was just so funny. So I had to just mention that here on the podcast. So anyway, that's all about the grand opening party and the studio. If I forgot anything, I will be sure to share on the next episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming to the party if you did. I'm so thankful to have had that experience. This is literally a lifelong goal of mine. I literally have been wanting this studio since I was like five years old and everything I've ever done in life was working towards this goal. So here we are after mm, 25 plus years of sewing, I am here in my gorgeous space. When, when I was learning as a little girl, I literally sewed on my parents' basement concrete floor and then eventually my mom helped me like get a rug on the floor and tables and organization. And it was like great little space. And then I was kicked out because my dad said he was going to start renovating the basement, which took several years. So I sewed in my, on my parents' dining room table for like 15 plus years. And then once the basement was finished, they had a little, a little office room down there for me. So I started taking my brides in that room when I started my business started in my parents' basement and then upgraded once I moved and got married, had a space there at our last house, our cute little adorable ranch house that I'll forever miss. I loved it so much. And then we moved here. So yes, I am so thankful. I am very, very fortunate. I'm very grateful. I'm just so happy to be able to be in the space and especially most of all, be able to serve my brides in this gorgeous space and give them the best bridal experience ever. But what I'm most excited for is to start taking on more custom couture clients now that I have this space and more availability to take on those larger projects. It's just going to be a dream to be able to do it in this new space. So if you're interested, feel free to reach out to us any of the ways, social media, email, through the website, whichever. But I'm just, I'm just, I'm just so, I feel so, just so happy and so, gosh, I can't even put into words how I feel, but I'm. I'm very happy about this space and people are often asking, okay, so what's next, Sarah? And I'm like, I think I might try to like enjoy my personal life a little bit first and then maybe, you know, get a little more sleep at night and enjoy life a little bit and then start brainstorming what's next. So I have some, I have some things I'm thinking about, but uh, most of all, I'm just trying to enjoy where I'm at in life right now. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for the support in every little way possible. And I appreciate it. Okay. One last funny thing to leave you on the end of this podcast episode. After the party, 
we were cleaning up late at night and look what I found. I found a magazine with Melissa Schreiber's autograph on it. Okay. Was this necessary, Melissa? My goodness. <laughs> anyway, just funny. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this episode has allowed you to approach the world with greater confidence in your own personal style. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out through email or their inquiry form on the website. I hope you are all ready to go and get dressed up. I look forward to sharing more dressing up tips with you in future episodes. Thanks so much.